Hey, what's going on Facebook? What's up? What's up? Sean here. So it's like 730 here in Dallas. Um, and no, these aren't a two-way mirror. I, I think the reflection of the light just kind of makes it look like a two-way mirror. Um, but it's actually really nice outside. But I wanted to talk some shop with you guys. Um, this is something that just kind of has over the last several weeks um, really kind of played itself out in, in my own business. And I felt like it'd be something that I want to share. Um, obviously, as I'm growing and learning and uh, building my business, I know I'm connected to a lot of entrepreneurs out there and uh, really resonated with me. I called my business partner up and I was like, man, listen to this. We have to refocus. We got to re get refocused on this. So, you know, when you start out as a business owner and I started out like a lot of small business owners do. I started out uh, as a home-based business and um, I did that for three years before I finally got my first office space. And I did a video, um, I think it was back in 2000, 2017 when I got, when I signed my first lease and got my first office. And I did a little video about, um, you know, getting an office space and doing the home-based business first office space and kind of my thoughts on that. And I definitely, uh, am, am an advocate now for getting an office space. Um, and then here a couple of weeks ago, we actually just moved into uh, a much bigger space on the top floor. And it's interesting because the suite that I'm in now was actually the first, uh, the first suite that I looked at back two years ago when I moved to this building. Um, but it was too big. I was like, man, I, I really want that, but it's a little too big for us. We really can't afford it. But one day, one day we'll be on the top floor of this building. And it turns out I'm here. Um, and that's awesome, but yeah, I've still got a lot of a lot of learning and growing to do. Um, but throughout that process, um, you know, I just wanted to share kind of uh, some of the things that that I've learned that have been really important. And this was an area where I kind of slipped back and then uh, kind of regained my my uh, my footing, if you will. Um, actually, from reading reading a book uh, that Gary Vaynerchuk recently put out, that uh, was was really awesome. So I really uh, recommend that. Uh, some of the people that I follow and I learned from is Gary, um, Grant Cardone, um, like a lot of his stuff, 10X Rule is an awesome book. But anyway, to, to get on the topic, you know, we started out a uh, home-based business, then went to an office, now we're in a bigger space. Um, but when you start out, it's really, I'm not going to say it's easy, but, you know, you, you don't have as much to focus on, uh, right? Your, your, your focus is selling, right? Getting, generating business. Um, and, and that's how I started out. We generated business, got new clients, um, but then uh, we needed a team, right? So next step was I need space. I can't have people come to my home and work for me at, at my kitchen table. I mean, I guess you could, but probably not the best business practice. So then I got the office space. Um, and then we outgrew that and now we needed this, this office space. And so what I did was I, I um, brought on two new people for the sales roles. So we got a sort of a junior sales associate and then a national account manager plus myself. And we started loading a ton of sales. And uh, that's what I'm really good at is, is, you know, top line revenue, marketing, sales, top line revenue. Um, and then my business partner, Doug, he focuses on operations and keeping the engine running, right? Well, so we dumped a bunch of sales on the team uh, and that created a new set of problems. So we ended up um, kind of in this weird spot of, okay, what do we need to do? Because we've moved into a new space. We've hired two new operations people as well as the two new sales people. So now we've got more bills. We've got twice as many clients, but we now need some more people to service these clients, right? Because once you start getting, you know, you start getting uh, sales and now you got order fulfillment, customer service, uh, you know, you got to, you got to uh, deliver on the promises that you sold. And so we're kind of like in this, uh, you know, horse or cart type deal, chicken or egg. What, what do we need to do first? Uh, if I hire more admin staff, now I've got uh, stress on the salespeople, right? And then if I hire more salespeople, well, now I'm, I'm adding more stress to the service people, to the operations team. So what do I do? Like, what, what do I do? And so what I found myself doing was kind of stepping out of sales and marketing where I normally spend most of my time and I start working with operations and uh, fine tuning processes and systems and sitting in meetings and doing trainings and uh, setting up office space and all this stuff. And, um, you know, really depending on my sales team to keep things running. And then what happens is we end up losing a, we, we lose a sales guy um, right in the middle of all of this. And I'm like, shit. So now I got to step back into sales 
But uh, at the same time, there's still a lot that needs help on the operation side. And so I'm like, where do I spend my time? And I found myself spending more and more time on the customer service piece, the operations piece, and less of my time in the sales role. And uh, as I'm reading through this, this uh, piece with, uh, by Gary Vaynerchuk, it, it, he said something that really, um, that really stood out to me and made me kind of refocus. And I, I got back with my business partner today. I was like, look, dude, read the passage, literally read the passage. I was like, this, I've got to refocus. And what Gary said uh, was cash is king. And this is what I've always lived by. Cash is king. Cash is the lifeblood of your business, right? Like, I think, you know, so many people get focused on, well, I got to do customer service. I got to deliver on my promise. I got to make sure my clients are happy. And while, yes, that is important, it is not the most important thing because ultimately your business cannot survive without cash. And a lot of people end up going out of business because they don't have enough cash. They're underfunded. Um, they focus so much on customer service and on delivery of, of products that they forget about the top line revenue piece. And the moment that gets out of whack, especially as a small business, you know, I'm, you know, I've only been here five years, six years. So even still, like we've got a little bit more wiggle room than we had maybe a year or two ago in terms of operating cash, but we don't have a ton, right? Like I can't not sell for weeks on end because things will really start getting out of whack. Um, you know, but, but Gary had really reinforced that, look, cash is king. You have to focus on cash. You have to make sure that you're making money first and foremost. That is the most important, number one, most important thing of any business. And it seems like, oh, yeah, like, duh, of course, you got to have cash. Like, that, that's stupid, Sean. You should have known that. But like I said, when I, I try to give you the backstory to understand the predicament, when, when you're in the thick of it, it you it, it's really easy to get sidetracked, to get pulled away or derailed on things other than making cash. And in my, uh, you know, in my particular situation, I had a team that was focused on cash, but then you, you, you forget it, how quickly things can stop. Like somebody could not show up, somebody could quit, somebody should, you know, could get fired or whatever the case is. Now you don't have that piece. Um, and, and that's where, that's where we kind of got out of whack. Was, I, I, I was so dependent upon the pieces that we had uh, that I myself didn't focus on my role in the company, which is sales and marketing. I, I stepped out of that role, got out of my lane to kind of help over here. And ultimately over the last two weeks, it's been really stressful. And, uh, you know, it's just really good to get back to that. Remembering cash is king. And that's the first and foremost thing. I mean, with customer service, if you, if you lack on that, you'll obviously you won't last, you'll go out of business, but not as quickly as not having cash. So then you got to figure out, okay, once you have the cash thing solved, right? So once we get this thing back online, which I stepped back into sales, started making sales again, uh, keeping the, uh, the revenue coming in, then we figure out, okay, what do you focus on next? Well, play to your strengths. And I think this is another big area that resonated with me is, you know, Gary had mentioned, you got to play to your strength. And he said, it's one of the most underrated uh, business strategies out there is playing to your strengths. I think we spend so much time focused on our weaknesses and focusing on uh, improving things that we're not good at versus really drilling into the things that we're fucking awesome at. And, you know, my business partner and I talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I don't, I don't even know if he really realized that he hit on this, but, you know, we, we recently switched platforms to this new, uh, this new platform that we're using to manage our clients business and a lot of transitioning, a lot of things that we gained a lot of functionality, but we lost some functionality. And he was saying, you know, telling the operations team, look, you can't focus on what you can't do. Like, don't focus on that. Focus on what you can do. Right. And I think sometimes in business, we get really focused on how do we get better at what we're weak at. And while we're doing that, anything that you take time to do, that means you're not doing something else. Right. You can only put your time in one place at a time. Right. So if I take my time and focus on things that we need to improve upon, things that we're weak with. That means I'm not doing the things that I'm really good at. And Gary had said, you know, play to your strengths, you know, get, figure out what you're really good at and stay in that lane and really fucking dominate that. And that was one of the things that I didn't do over the last couple of weeks is I got out of my lane of sales and marketing and focusing on top line revenue and started in this other lane that I'm not good at with attention to detail reports, you know, worrying about uh, profit margins and all this other shit, which we have accountants and, and uh, you know, we've got an operations team and, and Doug does that stuff. So there's really no reason for me to be over there other than the fact that I was freaking out and, you know, started putting my hand in the pot that it didn't belong in. 
And uh, so I just wanted to share that as like, you know, really bet on your strengths. Figure out what you're good at. Stay really fucking good at that because, and focus on making cash because if you're making money, everything else will fall in place. And if it doesn't fall in place, then you can hire people to make those things work. I can hire people to focus on the things that I'm not good at and, and let that be their strength. So, you know, making top line cash, making money so that I now have the option to figure out, okay, what am I not so good at? Instead of taking my time to worry about that and fix that, I can hire somebody whose strength is reports, whose strength is operations, whose strength is product project management, order fulfillment, you know, campaign management, ad analyst, or whatever the case is, things that I'm not great at, I can hire those things out, but I can only do that if I'm focused on cash. And so I wanted to just, uh, you know, put that out there to you guys. If you find yourself in a predicament of trying to figure out where do I put my time, what do I focus on, I've got customers needing all this shit, I don't have enough time or I don't have the cash to hire somebody, and you feel pulled in a thousand different directions that I know as small businesses, we all feel this way at some point. Step back, focus on cash, get that thing right first, figure out what you're good at, drill down on those things, become an expert at that, and just really make hit, hit a home run on, on things that you're good at. Stop trying to take dollars every chance you get. A lot of times we'll overcommit ourselves to make a dollar and we'll uh, take an order or take a client in an area that we're not so good at. We might, if we're in real estate, we might take a client who's looking, you know, 40 miles west of us and we don't really know that market but we really need a deal so we're going to take it which brings us out of our market and brings us away from clients that are right here and, and the, the area that we specialize in just for a quick buck so be uh, you know look at the long term big picture thinking focus on cash focus on what you're good at take that cash to then supplement and hire other people and delegate to build a team around the things that you're weak with and I promise you you will make it a lot longer then if you try to do all things and try to be a control freak, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, the book that I'm reading, uh, Ask Me Gary V, highly recommended. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid if you buy it. I just recommend it. I share the information. You do what you want to do with it.